Today on The Real, on Girl Chat, would you hire a Manny? I would just try to hire one, even though I don't have no kids. So I'm like, oh. <laughs> like can you take care of me? Yeah. And are you down with the DMs? To turn your comments off. That's such a great yeah, thing. Yeah, but the comments are so juicy. Then everyone needs a little Monday pick-me-up. So we're doing it the best way we know how with our man crushes. He is young and good. I tell you that, okay? <laughs> and we've got our holiday fake it or take it. All right, let's do this. Plus, shooter Cynthia Day Robinson stops by. On an all-new The Real with guest host Evelyn Lozada. This is my Seat warm because she will be back tomorrow. But we have an amazing guest co host who's with us all week long. You know her from the hit VH1 series Basketball Wives. Give it up for Evelyn Lazada. <laughs> Evelyn, girl, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you guys for having me. I'm so so excited. Are you? I am. Great. I'm super excited. You know how to keep it 100, right? I know how to keep it 100. Yep. A, a little 200. Perfect. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I love how it. have you been doing? Uh, I've been doing so good. I'm starting to come out of my cocoon that I've been in in a couple of years, so I've okay. been good. Okay. Well, yeah. we get happy that you're joining us. Are yeah, you ready for you. some girl chat? I'm ready for some girl chat. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, Evelyn, girl, we've known each other for a while. Yes. And um, there's something I want to ask. Now, all week long, you've been teasing the big announcement on IG mm. and social media, so everyone is dying to know, including myself. <sighs> what is it? And this is the real, so it's the perfect time. We're What's the big announcement? Real. The announcement is, is that I'm coming back to Basketball Wives. <laughs> oh. I love it. I know, I know. I know what everyone's thinking. Everyone's like, is she going crazy? She, this is, you know, her going backwards. But I've had several conversations with Shawnee about this. And we just really want to change the direction of the show. I feel like a lot of the arguments and a lot of the storylines are kind of, you know, have been done before. And um, a non factor. Yeah, no fact. <laughs> I mean, I'm like, I should be getting a check every time somebody says my yes. But I mean, we really want to add substance and depth to the show. We want to discuss, you know, we want to talk about things that women really deal with, you know, uh, miscarriages, having a baby after 20 years, um, you know, being a grandparent, whatever it is, we just really want to be able to add substance and depth to storylines. I want you so when Yeah, that's awesome. You know, my goal, you know, I told her, my goal in all of this is once you're done watching the show that you feel like, I actually learned something today, you know? And wow. that's really what I want for the franchise. I wouldn't be sitting here today if it wasn't for my little shenanigans on Basketball Wives many years ago. Right. <laughs> but I want to show people that you can change mm -hmm. and that you become a better person and, and all that good stuff. Oh, so the awesome. new improved Evelyn is coming back. I, I love it. I love it. I'm excited. I'll be tuning in. I am so excited. We are so excited to have you here all week with us. So we're going to get that new and improved started, all That's right? right. All right. <laughs> Up next, there is a new trend in childcare that's growing at a rapid pace. Hiring a Manny. Hiring a Manny or a male nanny to watch your kids is growing in popularity all over the world. Mannies are especially popular with single mothers who want a male role model you know, around the house. Now, mm. traditional parents claim they want a female nanny to watch their kids. So, Evelyn, how do you feel? Would you ever hire a Manny? Um, I would never hire a Manny. And first really? of all, I would never. I have a two-year-old, you know, well, three-year-old stepdaughter, and I can't even imagine having a Manny giving her baths and doing these type of intimate, you know, personal things with right. your children. I'd rather have a nanny that is, like, 
60, you know, <laughs> um, right? Nobody that's looking cute being hired coming in my house. I um, that. That's just the rule. But, um, yeah, I would feel, I mean, that's just not for me. I but, you know, they're, like, nowadays, the new, the new mannies, they're professionals. Um, they're certified. Background checked. You know, background checked. I mean, and for single mothers, it seems to be working for them. I would just try to hire one, even though I don't have no kids. So I'm like... <laughs> oh. <laughs> Like, can you take care of me? Yeah. 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 You know, I'm not mad at the idea of empowering the maternal instinct in men. Not only do I think that's a very um, necessary quality, right. not everybody's blessed with two parents, you know what I mean? Right. right. But um, it's okay to show that if you can take care of children, you are even more of a man than to just leave it up to a woman. You know what I yeah, mean? There's still awesome. men today that are like, oh, yeah. that's, that's her job. There are actually some men that are more nurturing than women. Um, if I'm honest, I think naturally, granted, I'm not a mother yet and Iz is a parent, but even with my nieces, like, the way Iz is more nurturing. So I think it is possible for a man to do this role and do it really well. Yes, yes. Yeah, let's hope. It is I yeah. mean, they hire him. Yeah. I have a friend But you said you just don't feel comfortable. No, I mean, I think it's possible, but just from my personal preference, mm -hmm. no, I'd rather have someone that's older uh, woman. Older. I mean, that's just my personal yeah. preference. I yeah. wonder if it's because you're thinking about this. I have a friend who's a counselor at an elementary school, and he refuses to be in a setting, even like if the door's closed, with a child or like some of the older, you know, girls, just because he says men are always the first to be pegged with inappropriate mm. um, assumptions. Right. And so I thought about that, and I was like, dang, that really sucks to just have to always look out for that. Is that right. something that, you, that in the back of your mind you're worried about? Always. Or being honest? Yeah, for sure, definitely. Um, and just having girls, I think that's really my, yeah. my worry in all of that. Oh, so, yeah. um, I mean, my sister's helping me now with my son, so I feel even, you know, more secure about, you know, his well-being. My, that's good. It's not my, like family is helping yeah. you, but that's not always the case. My first choice will always be family. Yeah. Like, like, I'm actually not a fan of hiring anybody that isn't my family. Like, I, I would you. mainly, you know, that I say yeah. my mom, even my nieces, it's my always aunt, my dad. Like, family takes care of kids. I don't know if that's a Latina thing or, like, yeah, you brought <laughs> right. your, your sister here. Right. Um, but for me, for some people, the Manny thing can be really sensitive. For some folks, like growing up, um, my mom uh, was molested by someone in her family, and I grew up knowing that. And from a really young age, my mom uh, told me what had happened to her and her story, and she made me really aware of uh, male interaction, what that interaction, what's appropriate, what's not appropriate, and that it was okay to talk about. But um, she even would say, she even went pretty extreme sometimes, where I wasn't allowed to uh, sleep over friends' houses who had fathers. If you were one of my friends in school and you were having a sleepover, my mom would say, well, is there a man in the house? And if there was, I was not allowed to sleep over their house. I was not, my, my dad didn't bathe me. Men in my family were not allowed to change my diapers. And I get it that that made my mom feel like she was protecting me. And when you've been through something like that, that's your main, uh, your main thing is to protect your child so that that thing never happens to them. Yeah. Right. So yeah. I think for young little girls that have experienced that are a mother, yeah. I could see the concern about a man. I just think in general, because women can touch yes, kids too. Very and true. I think in general, I like the fact yeah, that, you know, when you say, you know, um, you like to have someone in your family, yeah, you like sister. older, yes. you know, I, I go with that route, but I just, mm -hmm. you know, because I'm not a parent, but I have so many nieces and nephews and I've, you know, we've ran into yeah. that type of situation yeah. where it was both. Yeah. So you have to talk to your children. Yes. You have to communicate with them. You know, even if they're not, if you're not able to, um, if they're not able to talk yet, right. Look, you gotta check, check them out. But, you have you know, to check, yeah, and teach them to yeah. be vocal. Well, even now, my son is two and a half. Yeah. And, I mean, we talk about it now. I'm yeah. like, no one is supposed to touch your pee-pee. Anybody touches it, you tell mama. Like, yeah. I want him to feel super comfortable to talk to me That's about right. it. That's right. Absolutely. And I did it with my daughter, Shanice. Yeah. Like, we had open conversations from early, early on. And then once she started high school, then we started discussing, you know, boys. Yeah. And so she's 23 now, no kids, great girl. So I yeah. feel like having those open conversations with your kids are so important. That yeah. is yeah. so cool. Right. Again, all mannies are not bad. There yes. are some They're great not, men out yes. there. Not everybody's gonna do that, but it is great to be cautious. Yes, yeah. for sure. nothing's yeah. wrong with that, so. Yeah, you know. well, speaking of babies, somebody who's been acting like one lately, is pop star Justin Bieber. 
During a London concert this week, Bieber started raging against Instagram, saying that Instagram was, quote, for the devil, and that, quote, hell is Instagram. Bieber also complained about constantly getting stuck in the DMs and that he has no desire to get back on Instagram anywhere, anytime in the near future. Evelyn, you've got 2.7 million Instagram followers. Mm -hmm. Do you agree with Justin? I don't let a lot of that stuff bother me. I didn't even know I had DMs for such a long time. <laughs> I was like, you know, no, seriously, Carl was like, yeah, I heard that song, it goes down in the DMs. I'm like, it doesn't go down in my DMs. I don't even know what's going on in my DMs. Well, my question is, <laughs> does Justin know that you can turn your DMs off. Mm -hmm. I feel like, again, we've talked about J Justin before. We've talked about how much he may be going through because a lot of things he's saying kind of shows the things that he's Something aggravated about. with. Mm -hmm. So let's be honest, until social media, we didn't realize how much ugly there was in the world. Yeah. Let's be real. There's a yeah. lot of dark, there's a lot of hate, that things that have always, always been there, but now it's brought to light more. Um, it, so having social media is, is definitely not for the faintest of hearts. You gotta yeah. be strong. You gotta know who your core is because yeah. if you don't stand for something, you're gonna fall for everything. Yeah. You yeah, know? but he at the concert. What is he talking about Instagram? See? <laughs> Why is he? Because he's talking, but because his concerts, like you as a comedian, your audience is your platform to say one message and they're there to no, hear you. No, he is there not to give a, uh, uh, talking about Instagram is the devil, okay? <laughs> he is there to sing, what is it, sorry, or whatever he's saying. <laughs> I love that Sing song. that. So yes, sorry. I do too. <laughs> I guess I, as an artist, the the they're song, always right? gonna, yes. okay. as an artist, yeah. they're always emotionally, yeah. you know, going through, they're always emotionally yeah. expressing themselves, right? Yeah, and his audience are millennials who are the most uh, influential and the most influential It's mighty high funny, though. Social media. Justin became famous because of social media. Don't try to dog That's it true. now, okay? He wasn't dogging it when you were on there, YouTube, yeah. you yeah. know that. Don't, no, yeah. don't do that. And then I think that there's artists who you can tell they have their record label control their mm -hmm. social media, so it's just that. promotional work right. or like advertisements or pictures yeah. that you're you know you're you're celebrating things yeah. that are approved. So I think that's a smart way to go about it, so your fans know what's up, but yeah. then you don't feel like they're all up in your zone about your girlfriend or who you're dating or what you eat in that day, yeah. right? Or I, yeah. yeah, yeah. I think some of his female. I mean, obviously, I think his fan base is mostly young girls and girls that are crazy with the beebs, but yeah, right. You know, they were really going in on his girlfriends yeah, and oh he was really affected by that because I'm sure he has some super crazy fans but I mean you could turn your comments off now right yes, yes. yes. That was, I was so happy I haven't used it yet but I was like wow that's such a great yeah, thing yeah but the comments are so juicy but that's okay People that's crazy. the point that's where the devil part comes in yeah, Gina, because yeah. they become so juicy and so salacious with people saying negative things and and you almost read the comments and, you, and yes sometimes they can be funny where you're like oh this gets good but you have to think about the other person on the other end whose Instagram account it is. But it's not always it's negative. That's what I'm saying. Oh, and but a lot one, of the time it is. But now on Instagram, you can filter out certain words yes. so that those comments don't come up. I think it wasn't so much the negative. I think that he was getting hit up with a lot of girls. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what he's talking about. That's the devil. Because, you, you know, it's caught. hard sometimes yes. to DM. Yes. Yes. But now if we're going to really go there on yes. that tip, you really think about it, let's not forget when Justin put it out there, he took a picture of a girl, a really beautiful young girl, and said, who is this? Somebody, like, right. yeah, show me who that person that. is. So he kind of, like, dug a hole and asked for it. It's kind of exactly. like that phrase that they say, yeah. if you make your bed, you better be able to lay it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because it did allow him to have that little love match, a little yes. connection that he was able to find the girl yes. on social media. Yeah, I uh, meet uh, I meet dudes all the time on social media. <laughs> uh, that's that to me, you know. Ooh, I met my husband, my ex-husband on social media. Huh? Ah! That lasted 43 days, so you can show us you want. Wait, no, I want to know how. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, what happened? I mean, you know, it was so short. He watches the show. I don't even remember. It was on Twitter. He it was on Twitter, it. yes. It was on Twitter. How? What and, happened? Because um, yeah, I'm, I'm was dying. Stuff. What it was, was just, it was a DM. It was, no, what it was, instant message? Yeah, it yes. was on Twitter. Direct, yeah, it's still direct message And then this is when I was, you know, on Basketball Wives. And, um, yeah, he sent, you know, a message. And then who knew that we were going to end up being married for 43 days? So Who wow. sent a nasty pic first? He did. No, there was no nasty pics. You couldn't send pictures back then. Oh. It was just oh. messages. Yeah, yeah, it was just messages. He just this was you a up. long time ago. This was like what seven years ago, maybe six oh, wow. years ago. Wow. Well, he watches the show, so hey, I got your girl here. <laughs> <laughs>
Now, most young girls spend time thinking about their future wedding, their future house, and their future kids. However, two teenage girls in Melbourne, Australia, have decided they're not interested in having kids, and they want to have their tubes tied. Now, the problem is that they can't find a doctor who's willing to perform the procedure on them. Well, the girls, you guys, are 18 and 19 years oh. old. So they claim they don't want children because they don't feel like they're motherly and that having kids is bad for the environment. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm just gonna say I think this sounds crazy. Oh. You know, you don't have to have major surgery to not, not get pregnant, to, yeah. okay? Yes. It's just, I come agree. on. So extreme, no. and by the way, at 18 or 19, yo, you don't know anything. Anything. Ever. Shoot, even by 30, I was like, oh, this is the world. <laughs> yeah, I didn't know nothing you in my 20s I mean? either. Right. Oh my God, my mid 20s, I was still figuring things out. But I'm at 22, it out I knew I didn't want to have kids too. But really? I wasn't about to have no surgery not to have them, you right. know? Yeah, but at 22, I also thought I wanted a tattoo on my back. And guess what? <laughs> I really want that removed. Yeah. Well, yeah. Been there yeah. and done that too. Right. Yeah. We were talking about fertility earlier, and there's like a question of like, okay, well, crazy question, Lonnie. Mm -hmm. If if I couldn't carry a child, and I desperately, and we were, shut up, Lonnie, <laughs> and you were like my sister, and like like I really wanted you to carry the child Ooh, for me. Don't do that. Would you do it? You know I would because I'm not gonna take care of the kid. You are gonna take care. Okay, of but okay. but wow. you could still do that without having your tubes tied. That was my point. Yes. Thank you very much. What it's was the point? That that because you didn't. Yes, you I'm didn't confused. want children. But if there was an emergency or an emergency situation where somebody was like, hey, well, you, have, of course. you still had the option because you didn't tie oh, your tube. Oh, so that's why you're saying yes, don't tell them don't I'm going to make you come yes. and rub cocoa butter all over me every <laughs> night. But yes, I would do it for but you, But do you get the point is what I'm saying is it's not taking such an extreme measure. Yeah. What yes. if you change your mind? What if there's an extreme circumstance where you could put your well, the ovaries yeah. to use and those but tubes to use? Let Evelyn talk. I, okay. <laughs> I'm like, wait, let me say something. No, I, well, I was actually one of these girls. After I had my daughter, I was in labor for three days, as I mentioned earlier, because it was traumatizing. I was 17, I was a baby having a baby, and I spoke to my doctor, and I was like, I, wanna, I don't ever want to have kids ever again. And he told me no, the same thing that this doctor told these young yeah. ladies, or the, the doctor that they can't find. And in hindsight, looking at it now, I'm like, thank God, because... Wow. I now have my son, and he's just like everything to me. So I am oh. so glad that no doctors yeah. are doing this. Because at 18, you don't know anything. So Our next guest is a talented actress from shows like Spartacus, War of the Dam, and Arrow. Earlier this year, she co-starred in The Accountant with Ben Affleck. And these days, you can find her on the new USA Network series, Shooter. Please give it up for our girl, Miss Cynthia Adai Robinson. <laughs> to our Toys for Tots. Oh my gosh, of so course. Appreciate it. Happy to do that. Okay, so earlier we revealed who our man crushes are because it's Man Crush Monday. Yes. Who would it be for you? Well, I have to say, so this is a, kind of a tough one for me, but I'm going to go with President Obama. Oh. That is yes. Yes. Um, man crush. Reasons um, why. I'm, I'm savoring uh, him while I can. Mm -hmm. I've always been a, a huge supporter of his, and I'm going to uh, honor him by making him my my crush. Yes. All right. Yes. I love you. Now you are multicultural. How has that impacted your career? Um, you know, it's interesting. It's 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 all I know, so I, I, I can't really imagine anything else. But it, it does inform my work. I mean, it's. Nice to feel like you have multiple perspectives, and certainly when you're portraying characters, you want to sort of grab from different aspects of your life, different cultures that you're familiar with. How did you grow with. up? So my, so my mother's from Ghana in West Africa. Okay. Um, I was born in the UK, which always made me feel a little bit like an outsider in some ways, you know? Mm -hmm. but, but again, that, that status, it's like you grow to appreciate it as you become an adult. Definitely. And, um, See, we kind of related because I'm 
I'm, you know, from Ghana, and I'm part British, too. So we fight yeah. because... Yeah. Yeah. If you didn't watch the episode where we found out our ancestral right. background... Uh-huh. Yes, I'm British, bitches, OK? Yeah. You yeah. probably are related. Uh, you know. So tell us about Shooter. So, Shooter is based off the Mark Wahlberg film from 2007 of the same name. And in our version, we have Ryan Phillippe as Bob Lee Swagger. And I play a character named Nadine Memphis. And for people who are familiar with the film, in the film version, it was Nick Memphis. So, I am sort of an, a different interpretation of that character. So, it's, it's actually pretty cool to be the Ooh, female yeah. FBI agent. Um, why do you feel it's important for women to have tough roles on TV? I think it's just important to see different aspects of, you know, the female character in general be represented. Yeah. You know, women, as as we all know, mm-hmm. we're complex beings. So, you know, <laughs> you wanna, you know we're complicated. It's complicated. So, you know, it's it's nice to sort of be more than just the the window dressing, so to speak. You know, oh, okay. I know that I'm sort of. Uh, a complex person myself, and I can't imagine just being the supporting person in in my own story. So it's like you want to be a fully realized female character, and I've been really lucky in the roles that I've had um, to get the chance to do that. That is so awesome. awesome. The gift-giving season is right around the corner, but with all the giving you'll be doing, why not pause for some well-deserved taking? Want the designer digs but don't have that designer coin? <laughs> don't worry. Today, some lucky audience members could take home a legit designer item. All they gotta do is spot it. Mm-hmm. That's right, folks. You know what time it is. It's Thank It Art! Deep breath, everybody, because today we have some amazing and gorgeous goodies. As you can see, Miss Houghton is really excited about this. In each pair is a pricey must-have designer piece, as well as a cheaper mock-up version. We'll bring down some audience members to try and spot the real items, and if they do, it's theirs to take. If not, they'll go home with one of our priceless teachers from The Real Show, Lonnie. Our first audience member is Jamila Millet. Go play, go get, take it. She's so excited. Hey. I love it, I love it. Oh my god, I love her already. I'm out of breath. Where are you from, Jamila? Originally from New Jersey, but coming from Orlando, Florida. Orlando, Florida in the house. Woo! Woo! Okay, you look stylish. I love this. I feel like from your energy, you're, you're meant to win. It. Okay, you're okay. feeling that. I'm feeling that too. All right, let's All see right. what Miss Adrian has. Okay. All right. Now, when you're ready for a night out on the town, you'll definitely need one of these to pull your outfit together. Okay, I feel that. These mock croc clutches are perfect for any occasion. One of these beauties is designed by, yes, Victoria Beckham and sells for $525. And the other is a fake. Okay. Four fifty-six bucks. So, girl, which one you going? Okay, <gasps> you look like a woman who deserves right. the goody, right. you the have to good. Find the English inside of me. Do you want any help from the audience? Because I I'm do. sure they have an I opinion. Do. I do. What is I it, do. you guys? Help the sister what out. What do you think? What do you think? You know, all, all right. right. What do you think the answer is? All, all right. right. The answer I, is. I think number two is fake. I want one. Oh, oh. so sorry. Number two was the real clutch. But girl, you still get a real t-shirt from hey! 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 All right, who else wants to play? Make it our ticket! Our next audience member is Darcy Garcia! Yeah, I got it! Oh, Darcy! Oh, For. What an easy way to make your outfit pop. There's nothing basic about these printed ruffle neck blouses. One of these tops is designed by Diane Von Furstenberg. Yes. And so, 
We love Diane. And sells for $268. The wow. other is a mock-off price at just $20. So which do you take? Which one okay. do you pick? Think about it. Audience, help her out. What do you think it is? What do you think it is? I'm gonna go with number one. Sorry, that's incorrect, but don't worry, you still get a real t-shirt. Hi! Oh! I thought it was number one, too! Okay! Hey! <laughs> you guys? Oh, my God. We got a winner in this audience. Am I right? We have a winner yes. here! Yes, we do. Yes. Yes. We got one more item in today's Thank It R! Take it! Pasadena. Hey! All right. Now I hope you're I'm not feeling weak so, yeah. because Miss Lonnie's got something Bye. real good to you yes. that could make you faint <sighs> after she gets her breath. Okay, look. Lonnie, what you got? I'm just gonna take it from down here. Suede and luscious brows are making a lot of appearances <laughs> on the runway this season. So if you're missing the perfect purse, we got you covered, girl, okay? One of these bags, I don't know which one, is designed by Chloe and sells for, wait for this, $1,390. She needs that bag. That's a lot of money. Yes. And one, the other one is still expensive to me. It's $49.99. <laughs> Which one will you take? Okay, think about it. This is a Chloe. This is one of the most classic <gasps> brands of a bag you could ever have, okay? Which one are you Channel? both What would be girl. Right? We want you to get this. Did you say the answer is? I'm gonna go with number two, guys. Okay. Oh, it was a fake one! I'm gonna let you touch I'm it. I'm leaning. gonna let you touch I'm it. I'm leaning touch to the it. one that's the right. Oh, All right, no. but she still gets 